Okay, it looks like we got a little cut off in the last one. Um, I ran out of uh, memory on my computer, so I had to delete some files. All right, so we were just going to take a quick look over at, uh, I believe this is Alan's, whose is this? Alan, Joshua, and Magus file. Okay. I see when, I, when we hit space bar, we still get that, uh, that noise from iLab 3. And it looks like the enter key will launch the ball. Okay, so seems to, to be volleying okay. You can't see the the player two score uh, because it's being blocked by the, uh, the user's name, which uh, should have been a, a pretty pretty uh, easy removal. If you added in text, it should have been in the same area where you would have removed that text. Now that ball just just got by this paddle, so I think your your numbering might be or your uh, collision detection might be off by just a little bit. Let me uh, see there. But it seems to be going back and forth pretty well, which is good. Good functionality. We're kind of like stuck in this same pattern of of hits here. It keeps going right corner. Yeah, right there, just skimmed by the bottom. But not a bad attempt. I would definitely, um, you know, try revising the uh, the code a little bit, fix the text and that uh, collision detection. And I'm not sure if it's actually keeping score because I can't really see it. But uh, not bad. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move over to our, um, our Lab 3. I opened up where we left off last time. And if you remember correctly from last time, uh, we left off with adding in the sound for our little game program. Uh, this time through, we're going to be adding in our video. So make sure you have all the files needed for um, for this lab. Uh, those files I had provided for you last in the class. Everybody was there, so you should have them all. They should be in your debug folder. All the FMOD files, uh, that intro.wmv file, the Windows Media file all those sound files they should all be in the debug folder right there and in your lab folder here where the uh, the C++ documents are okay as long as they're all in there we should be good now, if you're using your home computer you need the Microsoft Windows uh, 7 SDK installed in order for direct show to work it is not part of DirectX 9C all right so since this is on YouTube, you can pause anytime, rewind. Um, I'm limited to 15 minutes, and these files are huge, so they take forever to upload, and I can only do one at a time. Uh, so I'm going to try to go quickly through this. If you need to, just pause, rewind, debug, whatever you got to do to get it going. Uh, the first thing we need to do, I'm back in iLab 3 where we left off. Uh, I need to go into the DirectX Framework uh, header file, DirectX Framework header open that guy up and we need to add in some basic um, variables to work with and include the direct show uh, libraries and header files from uh, from the Windows SDK so you see here we have our direct 3d9 our fmod stuff um, right after the fmod is where I'm going to be putting in my um, direct show uh, header and libraries okay pretty much the same except we're not going to use the quotes we're going to use the little carrots because that'll go find it into the Windows SDK the quotes are taking us to our folder um, yeah just, just a little FYI there that's pretty easy we're going to do uh, hashtag include dshow dot h uh, let's see it capitalized my D I'll trust that that's the right one uh, and then I'm going to do pragma comment and we're going to grab, go grab our library. So lib, comma, str, mid, m-i-i-d-s dot lib. Okay. If you're a slow typer and you need to jump back and forth between, between two windows, um, str, mid, make sure that uh, you, can, you can pause as you go. Okay. Uh, that's one part of this file down. I'm going to move down into um, all the way down to where I had my fmod variables. Let's see, it's right before public. So we're in our framework. So I'm fine going down, going down, going down, da, da, da. Here's all our fmod stuff. Here's that public uh, command here. Uh, right before that is where I'm going to be putting in my direct show 
variables. Okay. First one we need is I graph builder. I graph builder asterisk M underscore P. We're just sticking with our naming convention. Graph builder. Uh, we're going to do I media control asterisk M underscore P media control um, I media events those are all capital I's they're not L's, they're not ones, they're capital I's I media events asterisk, we're just taking the entire class with us here uh, M underscore P media events pretty simple naming here I video window so we can create a video window for this to play M underscore P video window okay uh, and that I believe is it for this file alright so if you need to pause and double check I'm just gonna double check my spelling graph builder graph builder media control media event okay so if you need to pause go for it I'm gonna save this file and I'm gonna move right into my um, DirectX Framework C++ document. And we have some things we need to amend in here to uh, to get this to play, which I, I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, we did a lot last time with the FMOD, so um, hopefully this isn't as, as crazy, but it's still going to be a little bit robust. Okay, so I'm in the um, the DirectX Framework.C++ file. Uh, we need to put some or initialize some more of our variables here. We did our zero memory key down thing here. Right before that, right in our in our initial framework here, we're gonna we're gonna say that the video playing is true. So we're gonna say m underscore b video playing equals true. Now I'm already thinking that I made a mistake there. If I have a b, let me just check my notes. Oh no, we never actually created that. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm uh, looking back. We never actually created um, the video playing variable. It's undefined. Okay, guys, I, I just just mind blind for a second. Obviously, we didn't define this in the header file, so I got to go back and do that. So uh, let's pop back over to the um, to our header file, DirectX Framework H. Um, I don't know how I, I I forgot about that. We have all these variables we're assigning in here. We did our our uh, all of our sprites and everything, our direct 3D, our, all of our all of our textures. We have all this stuff in here, and I didn't even set up the variable for um for to to see if our our video is playing. So what I'm looking for is this uh, prep time, frame rate, all that. Our assignment one here. Um, I'm just gonna put it right after that. Again, I'm in the, the class now of the header file. And I'm just going to put in a simple, I'll call this ilab3 direct show. Um, I'm just going to put it in as a bool. Makes sense. And what do we call it? M underscore B video playing. And this is just to, um, to see if the video is playing. Okay, so we declare it here. I'll save this. I'll go back. And now no more red squiggly lines. Okay, hopefully um, hopefully I didn't miss anything else in my notes. All right, so I'm back to the C++ document. And we're going to uh, go dig a bit. We added in a lot of FMOD stuff last time. And I want to go to the very end of that, which is all in the init function. So let's see here. So here's a net. Okay. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling down. Let's go right to the end of the init, right before the update function. Here we go. ILAB3 initializing FMON. All this error checking. All that fun we had. Okay. So I'm at the very end of the init function before, uh, before it closes. And we're going to add in and initialize our direct shell. Initialize direct shell. Okay. 
Um, so the first thing is to initialize the com. It's called co initialize null. Then we're going to create a filter graph. Um, you know, I hope you guys are getting used to uh, 3ds Max because we got some more weird, uh, weird parameters and method calls coming up here. So this is create our filter graph. As I create these videos, my RAM gets really filled up. So, so it's called co-create instance. Okay, um, cl sid underscore filter graph. The first one, null clsctx underscore in proc underscore server, comma iid underscore i graph builder, comma parenthesis void asterisk asterisk close parenthesis ampersand there's my ampersand there we go m underscore p graph builder wow always fun with 3ds um direct x excuse me said 3ds as in 3ds max which is a lot more fun okay then we need our media control so it's going to be m underscore p graph builder dash carrot uh, query interface i i oops, open parenthesis uh, i i d underscore i media control media control comma Void asterisk asterisk close parenthesis ampersand m underscore p media control close that all up and just scroll on that. Remember, you know, pause whenever you need to. Uh, we need our media event. And then we're going to start streaming our video. Media event's pretty much the same, so I'm just going to copy this part out. Media event. So it's the graph builder, query interface, uh, iid underscore i media event this time, comma, parenthesis void. Asterisk, asterisk. I mean, it's pretty much the same across the board, except we're just swapping out one word. M underscore P media event. And now we're going to start streaming our video. Hopefully, you have it in your folder. So, M underscore P graph builder dash s, uh, dash carrot, excuse me, render file open parenthesis. L, you know, is the string, the file name here. We called it intro. Well, we didn't call it. It came that way. Intro WMV. So whatever you record your normal video as for your, your group project, you'll just put that in here. And null for the playlist. Okay. So this video is coming up on, on 14 minutes now. We're not quite done with this area. We still have uh, plenty more to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause. And then uh, type it out, and then I'm going to come back, and then you can freeze the code on the screen. Okay, so right after we put in the uh, the render file, I posted in here um, the video window, um, and then a bunch of other fun stuff, setting the style, uh, basically uh, getting it to fit properly, fitting it to the size of the window here, um, and then and then playing it. Okay, so. Here's where we left off. I would pause here so you can, you know, type this out, uh, and then scrolling down, and then you could pause here for the rest. I'm out of time for this video, so this is where we're going to leave off. Um, make sure you get all of that. I'm going to test it out, of course, in YouTube. Make sure you can pause and actually see these things, uh, but hopefully you can. All right, good luck, and we'll pick it up in the next video.